and we're not allowed to sit there with you people. Because we're not allowed that to. So, my name is Marcus Schilling, and, and I'm a professional wrestler. Woo! <laughs> That sounded way more like Alcoholics Anonymous than I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> but a bit of a, some of you out there drinking some beers tonight and some wine? Yeah! yeah. yeah. A good time? That's yeah. what we're going to do in the summertime, right? Yeah. Time to relax, we have a few beers. But don't let it go overboard. Like, the worst thing you can do is like, oh, I've got a few beers, I'm going to get on Facebook now. <laughs> I'm going to get on Facebook messaging. I'm going to look up the people who... Maybe the person I had a crush on in high school, or someone I've got a beef with, I'm gonna, I'm gonna write to them, I'm gonna tell them what I think. <laughs> <laughs> but it went on a bit of a bender a few weekends ago, and I just took it like three levels higher than that. I went on LinkedIn when I was wasted. You can just so I'm like, right, I'm gonna find colleagues I haven't worked with for years. Like, oh, you remember when we did that project? Oh, it was so good. Remember that? I was like, I'm gonna tell my boss what I really think. <laughs> I was like, I was applying for jobs, I had no idea what the companies did, I was clearly unqualified, but... I woke up on Tuesday morning, you know, Tuesday morning, it was that kind of weekend. <laughs> With four job applications lined up, so I guess I'm gonna have to buy a tie. <laughs> but, uh, as I said, I've always wanted to be a professional wrestler. You know, from when I was a little kid, I wanted to be, I wanted to be the bad guy, the villain. I just wanted to, like, stand on a stage grab a microphone, and have people boo me out of the building. Fuck you, man! I was gonna say I was gonna try stand-up comedy on and hope for a different reaction, but I <laughs> I'll work on that one day, I promise. Okay, but you, can, you guys can hear, I'm not from around here, I'm not from Stockholm, Sweden. I love this city, but I'm, I'm not from around here. I come from a little place called the Isle of Man. <laughs> Some booze that, does anybody know where the Isle of Man actually is? I know you're going to cheer, like, yeah, Isle of Man, beer, we love it. What do you guys know about the Isle of Man? Anybody? Nothing. <laughs> 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 uh, Georgia that knows. They teach them well down in the South States. I love this guy, Paul. Now, the Isle of Man is known for a couple of things. I'll say one thing it's known for is it's inbreeding. <laughs> Another thing it's known for is a motorcycle death race, which kills several people every year. And the third thing would be Manx cats, which are known as the only cat breed without any tail. Which could actually have something to do with the inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I moved here, I was about 15 years ago now. Yeah, August 2006, a long time ago. It's a classic tale, a Swedish girl came to the Isle of Man and was like, I'll have... That one. <laughs> it's the biggest souvenir she could find, and I, I'm really not that tall. <laughs> of course, we've been back like, a couple of times to visit, but uh, they don't take returns, they don't do refunds, so I let them appear now. <laughs> but as I said, I'm, I'm a pro wrestler, and I try to assimilate myself into the culture here in Sweden. I try and get along. I go to parties, I talk about religion, and politics, all the things you should do. <laughs> oh my god. I got that right, right? You like talking about that stuff? No! No, avoid that one? Yeah! Ah, Fuck I yeah. Friends. But when I get there, there's always like one guy. They, they know I do wrestling, it's usually how I introduce myself. But always one guy's like, oh, you, uh, you watch that WWE wrestling stuff. You know that's fake, right? <laughs> Fuck them. And he's like, shit, my god, all right, okay, next time the Marvel Universe has a new Avengers movie, I'll go with you to that one, because I want to see something that's real. He's a great guy after that. But man, it's like, I've noticed a few things with this country, with Sweden, it's like, I see things that are changing, because I'm trying to learn about the culture, I want to fit in here. Uh, but when did it happen, like, that I Am Slatan appears in every single Swedish home. It's just there. There's somewhere under the mid-2000s. Anybody read I Am Slatan? No. Yeah, try to. Try to, try to avoid that. What bit did you get stuck on? Like the coloring in bit? Or the word jumble? Or... <laughs> it's too... It was boring and just quit. Exactly. But I've seen it in every single Swedish home. But another thing which... Uh, like a phenomenon that I noticed when I came here it's a strange thing with alcohol, and especially with Sistian Belaget, right? 
When I came here, you had these hideous looking purple bags and green bags. Remember those ones? Yeah. So people were like, we know, you know you've been, we know you like a bit of a drink, we know we. <laughs> They didn't like families, people I've been with who had planned their entire Friday be like, okay, a Friday shop, a big shop for the weekend, we're gonna go to Ikea first, <laughs> fill up and get loads of plastic shit, you know these big blue bags yeah. when you use for laundry? Uh. We're gonna get those so that when we go to Systemic, we can put our Systemic bags in those big blue bags <laughs> so that the neighbours don't know when we go from the car to the house that shit, I might want to get some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> I call it the system and scam, or the system of shame. <laughs> That's changed now, right? Because now we've got something called, like, plastic scat. It's like a tax you have on plastic bags. So the whole idea around this has changed. Now, if you're going to buy a plastic bag, it's an investment. You're representing a brand. You're proud. You're like, I paid money for this. <laughs> I'm part of the systemic group. I call it the systemic club. Right? <laughs> you see someone else in that bag, you're like, you know, because system, they'll help you. They have like these cardboard boxes where they get their stuff and they're like, yeah. yeah, take some of that. Bring your own bag with you. So if you're buying a bag from there, it's a commitment. Yeah. So someone else, you're like, hey, buddy, you're, you're in systemic club too, right? <laughs> First rule of Systemic Club, don't talk about Systemic Club. <laughs> kick me out of the But the whole thing of it is, with Systemic Club, is you see someone now with their old bags, the ones that you were ashamed of. And you see that guy now, you know he's held on to that bag for five, six years maybe. He's like the godfather, he is like written in in Systemic Club. He's the goddamn milieu yelte. He's the guy saying, hey, hey, Shame no yes. more! Yes. Shame no more! Yes. Alright, that's time we're gonna wind up out a whole other bit, but you've been an awesome audience tonight. And I love yeah. you. Yes. Yeah. One more time for Marcus! Woo! Woo!